everybody, it's Jill with Angel Creations. Welcome back to my craft room. Oh my goodness, oh my gosh, we are going to make the cutest little craft today. So the first thing I'm going to do is paint this Dollar Tree glass candle holder. And I'm just going to use Waverly chalk paint. I'm going to just pour a little bit in the cap here. It's oh so slow and thick that's kind of why i like uh to paint with it and it dries much quicker than anything else too or any of the other paints i find but it doesn't have to be you guys paint yours any way you want you could even use a spray paint take it outside spray paint it any color you want will do so i'm making mine be themed so I, you know, whatever color you theme you do, I'm doing a bumblebee theme. I love bees, if you didn't know that. I have bee earrings on every day of the week. I never take them off. I take them off and clean them, put them right back in, and that's not even that often, really. I'll be honest with you. I live in my jewelry. I am one of those people. Um, all my nice jewelry is sitting in a jewelry box, and I don't know why that is. Why do we just keep our jewelry nice and we don't wear it? I don't know. But anyway, I love my bees. So this is going to be a bee-themed craft, but you can do beach colors. You could do Mother's Day Um you could do, you know, whatever your mother's favorite colors are and just really make this totally unique. I'm just here to inspire you to make your own. And I'm going to do this a little bit messy because we're going to go over this paint job with antique waverly wax and i'm just going to make sure i get my edges here though and we're going to sand it off too and grungy it up so it doesn't even have to be a really good coat all right let's put our cap back on to our white paint and we'll set this aside to dry here whoops and then Let's make sure I'm not going to transfer any wet white paint here. All right, so it's a busy Saturday, and you will hear there's people outside working in their, out in their yards or hammering, and I've been hearing some um, power tools going, so please uh, bear with those background noises, okay? So I have one of the Dollar Tree little bird houses that is, they're so cute. And I have a couple here in my craft stash. And one had two holes, like an upstairs, downstairs. I almost went with that one. But I decided to go with the one hole. Just, I don't know, to keep it more simple maybe. And now I am going to paint it. I'm going to first take two yellows. So like I said, these are so old, these paints. They're Apple Barrel Yellow and Sunny Day. And I'm going to mix it because I don't really like the sunny day for this theme. But yeah, I don't really love the yellow by itself for this theme. Oh, I just got a piece of paint crap thingy in there. So I thought I would just mix it up and I'm kind of using up some old paint, you know, that I have been, uh, I don't know, it's just been a while. I used to have a group that came and crafted with me on Friday nights. Every Friday night at my old house, I had a big house. This is a tiny house. And every Friday night, we would meet, eight of us would come, would, well, besides me, seven of us would meet at my house, and we would do crafts every Friday night. And um, a lot of these paints, uh, 
apple barrel paints are left over from those craft nights. So um, it's kind of good to be using them up because they tend to really go bad, these apple barrel paints, if you don't. So I'm doing the light color first, obviously, because we're going to paint the bottom here black and the roof is going to be black. So I'm just gonna go around the whole birdhouse walls and paint them yellow. And then I'm going to go and paint my roof and my floor black. And we will be right back. Okay, just like that, right? Look at that adorable house, all black and yellow. So cute. Okay, now I want to take my candle. Um, let me just put the cover back on my craft paint, my black craft paint first, though. Um, I want to zhuzh up the candlestick and make mine look antique. And I'm going to put a little antique Waverly wax on it. Sound like Elmer Fudd when I say that. Antique Waverly wax. Waverly wax. All right. And so the way that I do that is just to put a little bit in the cap of my container. Whoop. I got a little on my finger that time. Let me grab that because I'll transfer that. And I'll have a big glob of it on my birdhouse. I don't want to do that. All right. I like to get a good stiff bristle. Bristle. Let's wet the whistle. A good stiff bristle brush. So normally it's a stencil br brush that I use. But anything really. As long as you can kind of daub, daub, daub most of that off. And now, I'm just going to go up and down and all around my little candle holder here and antique it up. And again, I always say this. If you don't like this look, don't do this look. This is what I like. I like an antique um, primitive more than an antique. I don't really collect antiques anymore. Been there, done that, love them absolutely love them but i have a tiny house now and so i don't collect much of anything anymore kind of had to give up my collections and i'm okay with that i was so sad when that happened and i had to move down into a little teeny weeny home here but i love it i knew see i thought okay i'm giving up all the things that i love and it really upset me and bothered me a lot. And even though I try to be humble and not have, you know, want things, um, you know, it's human nature. We all want things. And of course, we collect the things that we love. And so I had all these little collectibles, right? Well, then I moved into this tiny house and I had to get rid of them all. And I mean, I literally... I mean, talking teddy bears, pottery, all kinds of collections, okay? The, the, um, can't think of them, but the, the, the figurines, you know, I don't know. Anyways, done it, done them all, right? Well, let me just, can I show you this? How cute that looks now, right? And now I'm going to take, actually, I'm going to dry it real quick. So I moved into my tiny house and got rid of it all. And guess what? I felt like I unloaded my life. Like I felt so much lighter and it was like me and Jesus. That's all I need. I don't need all those dustables that I had to go. All my china and my china cabinet I gave to my daughter. All of the things. All of the things. And I just felt so light and unloaded and I just, it was just I, I thought for sure it was going to be a terrible, you know, I thought I was not going to handle it well at all. And it ended up being really, really good. I liked it. All right. I am going to take just a tiny bit of black and I'm going to take it off of 
the paintbrush. That's just how much I want, a little bit. And I'm just gonna dab my other paintbrush in it. And I'm just gonna go like here and there and a little black on here. I'm gonna get up and show you this close up. It really just adds another dimension of zhuzh, and I like that. So darken that up a little bit in some places. All right, not too much. Let me show you. Isn't that cool? All right, so now we're going to set this aside and let this dry some more here. Let's put this over here. And let's take our little house back. Let's take our rubber mat, it's not rubber, what do you call it? Silicone, right? And let's zhuzh up our, let's put that back and zhuzh this up with a little antique Waverly wax. I already put, um, I already put black on it, so I'm gonna try to get most of that off, but that's okay. Whatever's left is what we'll use. It's a craft. It is not a um, manufactured. So I'm going to get my corners good. I'm going to get around the birdhouse hole good. You know, where they would, where it would get good and worn. And I'm not going to do too much down at the bottom because we're going to put ribbon down there. So now I'm going to grab a little bit more. Dab, 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 dab. And not too hard, but I want to get up in the eaves here. And we're just grubbing it up, permitting it up, antiquing it up. All the words, any of the words, <laughs> we just, that's what I like to do. All right, so don't do this step if you don't like it to look dirty or whatever. Because some people think that's what it looks like, is dirt. And sometimes I want it to look dirty, to be honest with you. All right, you guys, here goes. How cool is that, right? All right, so now both of our... our um, both of our painted surfaces are now grubbied up. So let's put this away so we don't have spillage. Wash the hands with that baby wipe. And now we can get rid of the silicone mat. I got that from Timu and I love it. I got several of them. All right, now I didn't know which one I wanted to use so I brought a whole bunch of ribbon to the party. I really want to use this one. They're all Dollar Tree. I really want to use this one with the bees. So I'm going to try it. But I have a feeling I'm probably going to go with the black and white gingham. I might just like the look a little better. All right, but before we do that, I'm going to go around my surface on my corners and my edges. And I'm going to sand it up and make those look roughed up and old and give those a little bit of character. Like the rooftop here needs to be a little sanded. Do you see how it outlines? It really makes a nice little um, statement to your pieces. If you give it that little extra love, right? And it's hard to do after it's all painted. I mean, it's all decorated. So you kind of have to do it now. I like to get my corners really good. Whoop. Whoopsie. Let me get this corner here. There we go. Yeah, and then I even like to scuff up the roof a little bit. Dig down with that sanding block. I love this finger sanding block. They call it the gator. And what I love about it is it's flexible. It bends. So like when I was going around, did I tell you I went around this candle holder? I did tell you, did I? I might not have, but I do go around candle that candle holder or any glass 
I usually go around it with the um, any kind of sandpaper because it holds the, the paint better. Or there's another trick sometimes that I use too, and that is if you take Mod Podge to glass and do a good surface, let it dry, maybe another surface and let it dry, then you paint it up. It is a good, that will hold better too on glass. All right, one more side here. And I think we will call this done. So that's your step. Now, before we glue it onto this, we're going to take our B ribbon and see what we like. Let's see. This is all coming out, you guys, right now. So if you didn't get this last year, all the B stuff is coming out. All the B themed ribbon. They even have this one this year. Let me show you real quick if I can get my hands on it. They even have this big polka dotted B one. So cute. So cute. All right. Let me see. This might be too big and it just might be too cutesy. I don't know. Oh my goodness, though. It is too cute. It is so cute. All right. So there's this, which is cute. Or, I think I'm going to like the other one better. I think I'm going to like the, I mean, this is really, really cute. I do love that, too. But let's try this one. And this is all Dollar Tree, too. Yeah. This is the winner. I like this one better. All right, so let me just measure and cut. We don't need too, too much here. This is the winner. I just love it. It's just more farmhouse to me. All right, I am going to just take a little glue on the corner here. And I'm going to put that down right on the bottom edge of my birdhouse. I'm going to put a little bit more glue on each of my corners. I don't want a big glob of glue showing through. So let me just wrap that around. So cool. And another little glob here on the corners. I'm not pulling it tight just because I want it to be nice and neat like a wrapping paper ribbon, right? I hear everybody's golf carts running out there and everybody's busy, busy, busy. Busy, busy. I'm going to cut this little bit of corner off there. And I'm going to wrap that right around and glue it down. And then we'll cut off that little excess ribbon on a slant. I swear, I pick the stupidest scissors when I go to do this stuff. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll just have to be okay with that. But isn't that cute? Much, much, much better. Okay, now... You guys, we are going to have fun with the, ha, oh, I totally missed my jar there, with the Dollar Tree glitter glue sticks, but to me, they look like honey. I just thought them, I saw them, and I said, that's it, they're honey. So, I already have a stick in a separate glue gun that I don't only am going to use for the honey now. It's already warming up. So what we're going to do now is we are going to put honey dripping out of the birdhouse. Okay, because the, the bees have gone in now and made themselves, hold on, hold everything, hold everything. I don't know why that did that. Okay. 
Now the bees have made them, this happens to me in real life all the time. The bees have made themselves a nice little home here. So you have to go a little at a time, okay? A little at a time. And once this starts, and we kind of want it to drip, so I'm going to go a little more and put like a drip because we want our honey to drip. So just keep, look at the drip we're getting. Just keep going and let it drip. And as it dries and drips, it's, it's a perfect little honey drip. Let's get those cobwebs off. And then I might want another little drip next to it, see? So I'm gonna go put up another little drip coming down right next to it aren't those cool and you can just keep dripping away as many drips as you want and you use your gravity and holding it to help you get your design and that's probably all the dripping honey I want. But now I'm going, this is all nice and dry. I'm going to go in and just give this, I have to give it another honey stick here, another glue stick. I'm going to go in and round off this part, you know, the bottom round part of my honey that's dripping. I'm going to go in and neaten up my pile. I'm just going to give it a good top. Big heap ton of glue. And that is all I am going to do. So, so adorable, you guys. Just honey oozing, oozing out. All right, so now, while that's dripping, we might add a little more, we'll see. I have a container with bees. Of course I do, I love bees. I have to get these cobwebbies off first. But, this is a very little house, so I'm not sure which bee I wanna use here. So, I'm gonna just open up my bees, and I'm gonna see what I have. So I have one of those bees. Or I have one or two or one of these. So this is a button. And this are these are the Dollar Tree bees. But I think, so let's see. I'm thinking that the Dollar Tree bee is kind of too big. Maybe not. Maybe if we have it hanging off. I'm going to add a little more honey. Um, so then I have this bee, so any bee, I guess the Dollar Tree bee or the button. I like the Dollar Tree bee the best, actually, and I thought I wasn't going to. All right, so here's our honey. I'm going to take the little sticky thing that they give us on the back off. For one thing, it is acts as a little bit of a riser, and I don't want that. And it also um, doesn't usually stick good, so I usually have to glue it anyway. I'm going to zhuzh my bee up just a little. Oop. I don't want him looking brand, brand new. So I'm just going to go over him a little bit. And I'm going to glue him right on the side of my house over here. Maybe we'll put a couple. Maybe we'll put a couple. So he's coming into the honey over here. Yeah, let's put a couple. Why not? Let's take this one off its thing too. And those two are good to save. They do make good little sticky risers, but... All right, I'm going to zhuzh up my bee. His eyes too. He's got cute little eyes. 
All right. So I'm going to put this one on the roof over here. I'm going to put that one right on the roof. Okay. Cute. Really, really cute. All right. Should we do another one? Mm, we got to zhuzh this up so because people will see it. We got to zhuzh up his bum. <laughs> his too. All right. We are going to take a. Let's see. I don't know if we're going to do any more bees. Put those bees back. I'm having so much fun with you guys. This is so much fun. Just so much fun. Okay, so now I am going to put this on my stand that we made. But before I do that, I want to take another piece of ribbon. I want to wrap it around and make a bow. So first I think I'll make a bow and we'll glue it. On. So I'm just going to do like a bunny ear shoelace bow and we'll cut it and glue it on because it's just easier to control that way, right? So oh, I lost my fingers. Oh my goodness. All right, there is our bow. Now to get the size, I have to just keep fiddling with it because this is too big. So let me undo my ribbon. It's kind of, there we go. So I like to just pull on both sides until I get it right. Does anybody else have any other tricks? How do you get your bows just right? All right, that's good. Now I just want to cut off my tail's a little smaller and we're going to wrap this around which is only going to be let's see we don't want a lot of hangover so we're going to cut it right here and i'm going to also cut this end straight so it's not at an angle and then i'm going to just wrap this around and glue it right down to my vase And this one, I'm going to glue right to this other piece of ribbon. Whoop. All right, that looks perfect. Now I'm going to take my bow and just glue it right on. Right on. So cute. Look at the cobwebbies. Oh my goodness. All right, and here comes the final part. We're gonna put our, we should probably use, you know what? We should probably use a little E6000 here too. So hold everything. It's better to do it now and remember it than never get these caps off. I can't even get a water bottle cap off. All right, so let's put a little E6000 on here as well because that will be our permanent hold forever and ever and ever and ever. <laughs> Pretty much. This stuff is amazing. All right, and now I'm going to put a heat ton of hot glue and I'm going to go back over the part where I already went because it's probably dried by now and now I am going to put my house my little bee house right on top with all its little honey oozing out it is so super cute and I think we'll put another bee but we're going to put them down on the vase part down on the vase part this is so super cute you guys love the honey i almost want to have some honey dripping off the little post so cute all right i put my bees away 
Is it going to overdo it if I put another B? I, I don't want it too cutesy cutesy. No, I think we should just leave well enough alone, I think. Maybe we could try to drip a little honey off of this, though. I'm going to try to put a little honey hanging off of the post. Okay, this is where you have to work with gravity. You got to go up and down. I usually, I make tumblers and I make drips and I do it with uh, resin. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is adorable. Adorable. Okay, let's see here. I'm going to stand up and give you a cute look and this is a great time first of all let's just do this and then i'll show you but this is a great time to give me a thumbs up sharing is caring so go ahead and share this video with all your friends family and social media they're not going to want to miss this it's adorable look at the honey dripping and make sure you hit the subscribe button because we're so close. We are so close. I mean, I don't even know what the number is today. I will check it out, though. And um, I really wanted to reach that goal by the time I go on my vacation. So, um, yeah, help me out. That would be great. You would really be doing me such a blessing if you were to share my videos. All right, I'm gonna stand up and give you a really good close up and then I will tell you that I hope that you be good and do good. How cute, look at the honey dripping. Doesn't that look like real, look at that. I have it successfully dripping off of the post. Oops. Um, I'm messing up the bow. See the stand? Doesn't that look awesome? We paint it underneath. Nice and neat. Nice and zhuzhed up. I absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. All right. Love ya. Be good. Do good. Bye now.